So Toby Dog, everybody's very concerned. Do you know what ever happened to Bucket Duck? And by the way, today's video is sponsored by my friends over at Magic Spoon. So yeah, over the last uh, month or two, I've gotten a lot of comments and emails and DMs from folks asking, whatever happened to Bucket Duck? And for those of you who are saying, Bucket Duck, what's a Bucket Duck? Who is Bucket Duck? Allow me to explain. So back like, I think it was around, uh, you know, late August, early September, I had this duck that had contracted a condition known as bumblefoot. Bumblefoot is a condition where a bird, it could be a duck, a goose, a chicken, they develop an abscess on their foot from like an infected cut or something like that. And it swells and it's uncomfortable and they have trouble walking and it can even be fatal if it goes untreated. Now I would not say that bumblefoot is a common ailment that happens here on our farm, but you know, with 150 birds at our peak in the summer, we're bound to get like one or two cases a year. And since I've been doing this whole duck and goose farming thing for about almost four years now, I have developed a pretty standard protocol for how I treat bumblefoot. And really in my experience, there's two ways to treat it. Number one, you can do ongoing treatments of soaking the foot of your bird and trying to draw out the infection and that will take time and patience, but generally speaking, it has a high success rate. But if it's a more severe case of bumblefoot, you might have to resort to surgery, which we've only done here at Goldshaw Farm like once or twice. I don't like the surgery method because while it removes the bumble infection pretty quickly, it takes the duck several weeks to heal. And when that bird is healing from the cut and the incision from the surgery, you have a high risk of developing other infections. And it's probably gonna take just as long to heal up as it would to soak the duck for regular bumblefoot treatment. So that's why my first approach is to always do the soaking treatment when I'm treating that bumblefoot. Now I know some of you are hearing this and saying, gosh, I don't even understand why this guy is talking about all of this stuff. We're just curious about this quote unquote bucket duck that he keeps talking about. Well, the bumblefoot treatment is where the bucket comes into play. So over the years, what I've found is that the easiest way to soak a duck's foot is to put it in a bucket and cut a hole in the lid of that bucket and let the duck sit in there for, you know, about 45 minutes. And typically when I'm doing that soaking treatment, I'll do that, you know, once or twice a day for a couple of weeks. And usually that's all it takes to heal the bird. Which brings me to our friend Bucket Duck. You see, because back in September-ish, and even into October, she was actually staying in this chicken tractor here. This is traditionally our hospital shelter. As you can see right now, it's not much to look at because I haven't been keeping anybody in here. And some of the tarp got ripped uh, about a week or two ago when we had a high windstorm. But this would typically be the spot where I would keep a sick bird like Bucket Duck. By having her in the shelter, she's around the other birds and she doesn't feel completely lonely and isolated. But at the same time, it's easy to catch and treat her. And like I said, I screwed up on this one. And so I want to kind of give you guys the whole picture of it. And so I was doing that for several weeks, keeping Bucket Duck in that chicken tractor, soaking her twice a day. And she was starting to get better and better. Good morning, birdies. Don't sneak out. Come on. You gotta stay in here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey geese, you guys doing good over there? Chickens, you seem like you're doing good. Yes, everybody is happy and harmonious here in the big chicken and goose house. Get you some fresh water. There you go, second bucket. Oh, I can tell my chickens want food. Yeah, I'm very happy with how my bird ecosystem is looking right now. And I've even moved in Carmen and her two kids in with the rest of the flock. You might recall that they were the chickens living with the ducks. All right, let's see if we got any eggs this morning. Oh, looks like there's a couple back there. Well, these are the fake ceramic eggs. I'm gonna put them back in, but this is a real egg. Ooh, and it feels nice and warm too. And it looks like somebody still laid one down here. I am finding that training chickens to a new laying spot is never, ever easy. You know, one thing I was always very concerned about with this whole setup was, were we gonna have enough space to house all the geese and chickens? And I will tell you right now, this is half the size as what I was originally planning, but it feels about the perfect size for the number of birds I currently have. And so, as I make plans to double the size and actually build a bigger hoop house for next year, I'm actually thinking that I might end up even moving the ducks inside of here. And just having ducks, geese, and chickens all live here in the winter. It's so much easier to care for the birds and really manage them inside that space. It's got me questioning my other duck house setup. And as far as keeping it clean and hygienic, all I really have to do there is drop down 
down a fresh bale of straw or wood chips. And I do that like two or three times a week and it, and it works great. It doesn't stink at all. It seems pretty hygienic. And I know I'm gonna have lots and lots of good compost come springtime. Good morning, weird chickens. Now, before I tell you guys about what's been happening with Bucket Duck, let me tell you about our sponsor, Magic Spoon. So as you guys know, I'm a huge cereal fan, but you guys also know that most cereals have way too much sugar to want to eat them on a regular basis. And that is where Magic Spoon comes in the clutch. Magic Spoon is a high protein cereal with 13 to 14 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Magic Spoon comes in a variety of amazing cereal flavors, frosted, peanut butter, chocolate, fruity. It just takes one bite to hit your taste buds and you will be flooded with a wave of nostalgia that will remind you of the sugar cereals that you used to eat as a kid. It's a new year and you might have some new health goals, but that doesn't mean you can't relax with a nice bowl of cereal and crush some Saturday Saturday morning cartoons. After these messages, we'll be right back. With Magic Spoon, you can do that. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today in the new year. Grab a flavor variety pack and be sure to use the promo code Goldshaw Farm at checkout and get $5 off any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the promo code Goldshaw Farm to get $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash Goldshaw Farm to save $5 today. So I definitely know that as soon as I finish my chores, I'm gonna be eating a bowl of Magic Spoon to kick off my day. Isn't that right, Ginny? By the way, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Ginny's been wearing her camera this morning. I really wonder what she's been up to. So now I'm sure you're all wondering, gosh, Morgan, if you spent like four, five, six weeks soaking bucket duck, how the heck is she? I mean, what the heck is she doing? Did she survive? Did she pass away? Did you have to put her down in your duck and goose call? Like what happened there, buddy? And honestly, guys, that's where I owe you an apology because I never remembered to include an update about bucket duck in a past video in the last couple of months. Release the Kraken! And well, to be honest, at this point, it's actually a little bit harder to figure out where Bucket Duck is because I introduced her back to the flock. You see, really by, I don't know, I think it was about mid-October, she'd fully healed up, and so there was no need to keep soaking her. And so that just meant I could put her back with the rest of the other ducks. Now, in terms of which duck she is and where is she exactly, um, let me try to find her for you. This part can be a little bit harder because She's just a khaki Campbell duck, and a lot of the khaki Campbell female ducks all look the same. But I'm sure with my keen duck detection skills, I can spot her eventually. Um, let's see, where is she? she? I think she's in that pack right there. Oh, I think I spotted her. Yeah, I definitely spotted her. She's right here, she's under the, the house. So she's this one right in the foreground. One right dead middle of the screen. Notice she walks a little bit slower than everybody else. I think that's actually a little bit of a remnant of the bumblefoot. But overall, she's happy and healthy, and she's like a perfectly normal member of the flock. So yeah, it's actually a happy ending for Bucket Duck. She's just back with her brothers and sisters doing her duck thing on a daily basis here at Goldshaw Farm as part of the quacket. Ginny, did you just knock over that egg? I choose violence. Oh man, it looks like Ginny's playing with the eggs. She's developed this weird habit that I try to set like the one or two eggs that I got each morning, and then she just tries to knock them down. <laughs> Ginny, what are you doing? You're up to mischief there. All right, I'm gonna have to take these with me because they are not safe from Ginny Boom Boom. 
Not in the least bit. Okay, Jenny, back to work. Down you go. In terms of chores I have to do today, by the way, I actually have to work on fixing this corner right here. So a couple of days ago, I had a little bit of an incident. Um, actually, I'll just let you watch this TikTok I made that explains the whole situation. Just a fair warning, this video is gonna show the darker and gorier side of farming. Please look away in three, two, one. Don't ever let anyone tell you that farming can't be a full contact sport. So I was filling up the water for the animals this morning and I was walking through this space right here and I caught my head right on the thing. You can even still kind of see my hair right on the corner. It just goes to show me that sometimes I don't think about the safety of my own buildings and I think I gotta just do something a little bit different here. I don't need stitches. Be careful out there, kids. You only get one body. I guess I'm just lucky that it's cold enough that the blood seems to be freezing. So yes, I was very lucky that I had Allison on hand to patch me up and the cut was not more severe and that I didn't like, say, poke myself right in the eye. But it's got me thinking a little bit more about some of the safety of my buildings and making sure that I like cover and safety cover corners that are sharp like that, that are right at eye level. If I wanna be farming for a long time, I can't have crap like that going on. And honestly, one of the things I'm actually thinking about for this year around the farm is inviting people to come and visit and having like open farm days where people could come and I can give tours. But if I'm gonna do that, I gotta make sure this place is safe and sound for that sort of thing. You know, that's like one of the serious risks of inviting the general public. So if I'm gonna actually pull off the idea of having open farm days, I'm gonna need to figure that sort of thing out. All right, let's go see how the cattle are doing this morning. Good morning, cows. Well, it looks like I got plenty of water. I just filled it up last night, so no need to fill it up this morning. Let's see which cow comes to me first this morning, huh? I continue to work on training them to the alfalfa cubes. Ginny has started to become very familiar with our cattle as well. Hey, Ariel. How's it going, girl? You want some? Yeah, you want some? Okay, there you go. Hey, Ann, would you like some? Ann has actually been the most skittish cow we've had on the farm, and she has not liked taking any food from me so far. I wonder if today is gonna to be the day that she lets me feed her. Come on, Anna Green Gables. You don't hurry up, Audrey's gonna take your spot. Yep, that's definitely been the case. Hey, Audrey, good to see you. Yeah, see, Audrey's very familiar and comfortable. And then once Kurt Cobain comes over, I know that the party's over for trying to feed anybody else. Maybe I can sneak a couple more to Ariel here. There you go, Ariel. There you go, girl. But yeah, see, the two more dominant bovines, which is these two guys, always push everybody else out of the way when they see me coming with the treats. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but Jeannie Barncat is the queen of the mountain right now. <laughs> I love you, Audrey. Love you too, Kurt. You guys are just sort of the food bullies. They get so comfortable with me that it actually makes me feel uncomfortable. Like I know that there needs to be a delicate balance with how close I get to them. Because you know, with like a thousand pound animal like Kurt, one fell swoop of his horns could really knock me down, could gore me, cause a lot of problems. And so when I feed them and while I'm working with them, it's very much a delicate balance. I gotta make sure I don't get cornered, I don't get trapped, I don't get into a place where they get too aggressive with me so that I can remain safe. But all of this has actually got me really thinking about my long-term winter setup and what I wanna do with these animals. And I'm not 100% set on my plan for 2022 winter, so like next December, but as I look to expand my herd and hopefully we'll have some new calves on the farm as well probably as acquire a couple more animals, what I know I really need to do is make sure I have a bigger and easier space to manage this is sort of hodgepodge and it works for this year and it's gonna be fine for this year, but it's not what I want as the long-term setup. I mean, heck, the reality is, if it wasn't for the water and minerals being down here, I wouldn't even think they would use the barn. And so I know I don't need like a big enclosed structure like this, particularly for hardy cattle like the Highland cattle. What I really need to focus on is figuring out a watering setup that's gonna be great year round that's probably further out in the pasture. But all of that is work for later this year. Right now, all I need to do is just keep working on them and getting them comfortable with me. <laughs> Speaking of which, all I had to do is shake that bucket and look who came running. 
There you go, you two. Let's check on our other resident of the farm barn. How's it going there, Mr. Buck? You settling in there, huh? He likes that perch. Is quarantine treating you well? I think you're looking pretty good. Still haven't gotten much more comfortable with me, but I guess that's understandable. Looks like I'm gonna need to clean out your water, but at least it's not freezing in here. It's been a relatively warm winter here, Uncle Buck. Yeah, Uncle Buck has been doing really well so far in his quarantine section. He's been in here for a couple of days. I'll probably keep him in for a couple more before I introduce him out to the rest of the flock. Bringing Buck on board means I'll probably keep everybody actually in the hoop house a day or two longer, just so he has like maybe two, three days to acclimate inside the hoop house as well. Since I'm not hurting on space in the hoop coop and it doesn't seem like the animals are unhappy, I feel like that's gonna be a fine plan, but I will be very curious to see how he introduces with everybody else and particularly with the geese. You know, I do wonder if he's gonna get aggressive with the geese. The geese and chickens have mixed so well together, but I have no male birds in that chicken flock right now. And so some of the territory drive that you would typically have doesn't exist. By introducing Buck into the flock, there's gonna be a lot of chaos because number one, he's gonna be trying to figure out his space in the chicken pecking order and hierarchy. But then number two, he's gotta contend with geese, which I don't even think he's ever lived with geese before. So that's gonna be a whole new situation for him. But all of that's gonna happen in due time. And uh, by the way, if you guys are curious about Bumblefoot and how you actually treat Bumblefoot, a couple years back, I made a video about the full treatment process and what it looks like and even what Bumblefoot surgery looks like. You get to see my wife, Allison, perform surgery. Take a look at this video right over here and I hope you enjoy it. And I will be back very soon with a fresh video as well. Thanks for watching.